everybody. This is Naven Ilyev. Uh, we're interviewing him. I'm interviewing him. There's too many. No, no royal we. I'm interviewing him yesterday. That's Wednesday. Um, so that, you know, we can actually have this interview at a reasonable time. And then we're going to be, uh, the, obviously, you guys are watching Sound Booth Theater Live now. So um, hopefully you guys aren't too butthurt about the prank. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it even. And even more, hopefully, uh, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really hoping you guys listened to the stars have eyes. Um, that that one, if you haven't yet, go to our platform, check it out. It's for free, the first episode, and then for the next few months, we're going to be producing more. And then at at uh, I'd, I'd say three months in, we're going to release about three episodes at once, like in a big burst, and then it's going to be monthly after that. So. Naven, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us for a little bit to uh, talk about the stars have eyes and everybody loves our chess and all your beautiful work. Happy to be here. All right. So um, one thing that I'm really uh, I'm, I'm curious about, and I really I just want to take everything kind of almost to the very beginning. Um, were you writing stories before you got onto Royal Road? No, I mean. I haven't written them down, but like, you know, when you're, when you're stuck, like late at night, there's no internet, you can't fall asleep and your brain goes wherever it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, it just kept, kept dreaming up little, little stories, little characters. And at some point it was like, you know, I, I'm just going to put these into text and see what happens. And here we are. Wow. Okay. So when, when you did start on Royal road, uh, what was your first story there? And yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't like to talk about it too much because it's the first story I've ever written. And it's like, on one hand, it's so atrocious. I'm actually embarrassed it exists. But on the <laughs> second hand, I can't bring myself to bring to tear it down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the first story is, it's called Binary Soul. It's, it's weird. It's very weird. Yeah. I imagine it would be if you wrote it. But uh, so what, what is it? What is it you don't like about it? What What is it that's... Uh... Um, so before I, I started writing that, I was heavily into Japanese light novels, right? Uh, so your, I think it was Overlord at the time, right? Mm. And the biggest thing I don't like with it is is how weeby it is, mm. right? And I also, also I, you know, this being my first attempt at actually writing, I I I, I made a pretty basic mistake in the actual writing from a technical standpoint. Because in my brain, uh, I was like, wait, how do I differentiate between which character is speaking, right? And my brilliant suggestion was just to put their name in parentheses after the thing, instead of, you know, doing the, the logical thing, which is, you know, oh, hello, said so-and-so. Right. So, you know, that's... And by the time I realized I could have been doing that, I was already like 200 chapters in. <laughs> and I, I was like, you know what? I, I, I made this bet and I'm going to lie on it. And I just kept going like that. So so you, uh, I mean, this was this your first time really working um, in English as well, like writing stuff in English? Or is this something that's just been part of your education forever and like just something that you've always been used to? I mean, I've gotten... I'm I'm pretty good with, with English, right? When I when I was uh, still in elementary, even my parents shelled out, sent me to these like courses and stuff, right? It, it worked out pretty well, you know. No complaints there. Yeah. But no, that that was my first attempt attempt actually writing long form. I haven't even written essays, I don't think, in English. Oh wow. Or oh. if I had, I've just completely forgotten them. So you were inspired by Japanese light novels. Was there any other English literature that you were interested in at the time? Um, no, I, I actually do not read, like at all. Like the the the, the only two series I I remember I've read out of my own volition. The first was Harry Potter because it's Harry Potter, and I was still very young. Uh, and the second was the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the five book series, which. Is uh, is pretty radical. I, yeah. I, I at some point tried to pick up um, the Discworld series, but I only got like 
I'm gonna say like like uh, two chapters into the book called Guards, Guards, and then I I, I just kind of lost interest. Wow, uh, reading isn't for me. It's, it, it's very weird for a writer to say this, but reading, not for me. Because huh. why would I be reading when I could be writing, right? <laughs> right, it, right. It, 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 it's the same thing with uh, with like you know video game streamers. Why would I watch yeah. someone playing a video game when I could be playing a video game? Is that well, just how my my brain be? I, I think that's probably the same way I am with audiobooks. You know, I'm I'm making more of an effort now than I ever did uh, to listen to other audiobooks, other narrators and stuff. You know, I'm trying to um, get deeper into the culture and learn more about the up and comers, and you know, uh, just gather more from from other producers and maybe learn something. But it's hard. It's hard to do, especially since. I'm running a company and narrating audiobooks and, you know, ridiculously busy all the time. But one thing I remember is when I first started off narrating uh, audiobooks, I didn't like them then either. So um, maybe that's why I'm good at it. And maybe that's why you're good at writing. Uh, like one thing that doesn't surprise me at all is that you were in that you read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because I definitely see a lot of inspiration from uh, Douglas Adams writing in your style, um, and that's definitely a compliment because Douglas Adams, in my opinion, was a true genius, uh, especially as an author. Um, so, has Royal Road significantly changed? since since you first started there um well kind of it, it's it's a bit of a trick question because when i started it right i first found royal road because someone linked me to a story on there like like years ago like five years ago or something or even more and then when, when i was like you know what i i can't find any stories any good stories that i like so i'm like you know what i'm gonna try writing one and i remembered oh yeah there's this weird site where anyone can post their stories you know, and that's when I started writing there, you know, after not seeing the site for like two years or something. Anyway, long story short, of course, it's changed. It's you know, The website itself has had several overhauls, but the overall, shall I say, spirit of it, I think has remained fairly consistent um, in that, you know, if you go there, expect to see Chinese knockoffs and self-inserted isekais, which, you know, for the most part is, you know, or, or rather was again i don't really read but it's it's changed well uh, you know it's it's a good place it's a, it's a good place you know they don't you know bog you down with like copyrights or any of the other stuff that some other websites do um you know they're pretty supportive uh you know when you when you say hey uh, uh you know um I, I like to do this this you know i, I like to run some out you, you want to post like 50 different series that are just uh Drawl and, and cringe. You can absolutely do that, right? They're, they they do. You know, I'm, they're not. It's not the wild west, right? There's moderation, but overall, I would say I, I'm I'm pretty happy uh, ha having started there. Yeah, and you know, it to me, Royal Road has always been kind of a a mystery and like um, kind of amazing because of how many authors that e just alone that I've connected with and actually made successful projects with uh, who came, who started there, who started writing fiction on Royal Road. So um, it's really cool that you kind of are cut from the same cloth in a, in a way. Um, so uh, how did ELLC come about? How did Everybody Loves Large Chests come about? And how long did it take for it to become the phenomenon it is today? Ah, uh, yes. So the start, right. How should I put it? I was like, you know what? I want to. I want to. I want to write again. It was a, one of those situations where I see all these, you know, these easy guys and all these people that are like, you know, uh, supposed to be monsters, but they're just injecting their like modern, real world sensibilities into every situation. I was like, come on, really? You, you have an opportunity to write an actual, honest to goodness, completely alien monster, and you just fall back on the hunt for pizza for seventeen chapters, really? <laughs> You know, yeah. So uh, again, I, as with binary, so I just I wrote the story that I wanted to read. Essentially, is what happened. And as for how it started in that way, well, you see, there's a an ancient relic, um, a meme image of a 
of a, of a you know the archetypical mimic uh, with 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 the words you know um, I uh, something something I laughed the bartender laughed the table ra- laughed we killed the table good time yeah yeah um, and and that just kind of kind of started and, and I'm I'm a sucker for bad memes mm-hmm. and 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 bad um, puns so you know. Freaking boxy tea morning wood in a uh, in a style called everybody loves our chess. I could not help myself. It was supposed to be just a just a stupid one off, and then just kind of ran away with it. Uh, as for how long it took, um, I mean it's not one of those things that really explodes overnight, right? Mm-hmm. It's especially on on the royal roads unless you already have some kind of following, which I kind of did. But this story was so radically different from from the last one that, you know, I don't think there was any crossover. But I would say about six months in was when it started getting taking off, and then about a year in was when it got popular to the point where I I I went, you know, I could probably make a make a killing out of this, money wise. And uh, unless I'm mistaken, the First volume of uh, of the book was published uh, was published to Amazon on I think it's either the first or second anniversary of the series actually starting. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, and then and from then you know people picked it up again. I it, it, with with this kind of things it's important you know it's a lot easier when you already have an established fan base that are like, hey, it's it's the guy that wrote this X, so you know maybe it's it's good. Right, so that gives you that, that little boost to get you over the hump at the start, because you know, starting out as a complete nobody is pretty, yeah, daunting. Right, right. Yeah. So um, when the first book came out, how far were you into writing the entire series? I mean, when the first book came out on Kindle, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea at this point. It's all just a just a blur of, yeah. I mean, I remember, I think I remember going to your Discord server and seeing some illustrations around the same time that you published the first book of characters that I still haven't encountered yet. So it, you seem to have, have made it pretty, pretty far. Um, like, um, I'm not sure when there's a, there, there's, it looks like a kind of a griffin lady. Uh, oh. Or maybe she's a harpy. I I, I don't know. Maybe it, I it's, uh, it's it's both actually. It's a griffin harpy. Oh, okay. All right. But so yeah, that's, like... that's spoiler territory. So you. Know. Okay. So, but I mean, I if I'm not um, mistaken, she was she was there when you when you released the first book on Kindle. So, mm, I would say no, nah. not quite. Well, not. Uh, I would say it's closer to. Uh, actually, where where the Kindle releases are about right now, you know, volume, uh, volume was it six, seven? I don't even know anymore. Hmm. Um, so, when uh, do you remember when I first started narrating? Everybody loves large chess on Sound Booth Theater Live. This show, by the way, and for everybody who doesn't know, um, when I first started this show, uh, it was just me. I was just on Periscope which is Twitter's streaming service. And I had never seen a narrator stream before, so I figured, what the hell, let's give it a shot. And Everybody Loves Large Chess was one of the first things that someone named Ian Mitchell requested that I narrate. And so one day he sent it to me, and I I read it on on the show, and it killed me. It was hysterical. So um, that's, that started a really like a long relationship between me and everybody loves large chests on that show uh, before you even before Naven even uh, published on Kindle. So uh, do you remember when I first started that? And what were your first impressions? Um, uh, first, okay, so, so first two impressions were when because I didn't even know it was happening, right? Someone in my in my Discord links me to that, right? Mm. And I, I don't even remember which chapter it was. I think it was your second or third time reading it already. For context, Jeff read a lot of stuff <laughs> before he actually started recording it. Um, yeah, I mean, at least six or seven requests before I started. Yeah, a whole, bu- a whole bunch. Yeah, And 
um, my first my my first reaction was was holy crap, this is cool as hell, and my second reaction was holy crap, this guy is really good actually, because I was honestly I was expecting some some no offense but some some rando guy in glasses. Uh, starts reading my stuff like, oh, this is gonna be you know, haha, funny, you know, a bit of a cringing, you know. Let's let's all suffer together. But no, it's actually <laughs> really good, like, like like ridiculously. I think you you really, you know, after uh, after a while, you really kind of. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get a little bit pretentious. I think you really transcended the written book at some point. Oh whoa, okay. I mean, uh, you know, audio is another another layer to you know express uh, scenes and stuff. I don't know. Artist. Well, I, I'm I'm glad it came off that way. That's always that's always what I try to do. Um, and, but it's really easy to do, or it's it's really easy to perform well with what you write. Uh, I feel like boxy. When you write boxy, it's just 100% natural. You know, I there's I've never I've never read something that boxy did and gone. I don't know. Is that out of character? Does that make sense? Uh, it, it always it always seems to logically follow, even when it's a surprise. Um, and so it was, it was pretty easy for me to, to get into his head for a lack of a better term. Um, so, uh, how did the stars have eyes come about? Um, so the stars have eyes again, as with a uh, large chest came out of a meme, which is a, a, just a, just a stupid little, little meme template. It was like, ha ha ha, uh, you know. Eldritch being girlfriend from beyond the stars. It's just a very stupid thing, right? And I was like, yeah, this might this might this might make for an interesting story. And then I, you know, I I, I tried some things out and you know, I this was a uh, around the time where uh Larches was either wrapping up or had already wrapped up on Royal Road. So I was like, I, I need a bit of a palate cleanser, essentially. I need something that's Kind of the same, but also radically different. I made a conscientious effort to just broaden my 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 horizons a little bit. You know, try, kind of try and write instead of a haha funny murder box. Instead, it was like a a wholesome space romance thing. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know how to classify that this story at this point. There's so but many it, elements. It was it was essentially an, an experiment. Um, you know. To, to see what I can do with it. I, I think I did all right. I, I learned a lot, definitely. And, you know, again, since it started as an experiment, it was never intended to go overly long. That's why there's only like 30 to 40 chapters or something. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite thing about The Stars Have Eyes? Um, so I, I have a... As you might have guessed from my book references earlier, I have a special love for... Uh, how how inherently silly and funny the whole Britishness thing is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, uh, queuing, uh, what what what, uh, God save the Queen, all that, you know, full right. on meme potential, and I just, I I, I I I like that I got to take that to its kind of natural evolution, right? I mean, there there's a there's a joke there's a joke somewhere in the book, uh, sorry, somewhere in the story. That I'm particularly fond of, fond of, and that joke is that essentially, at some point, the queen brexited the entire planet. So Britain just lifted off into space, left everyone behind. I love that so much too. <laughs> oh man, yes, yeah. brexited the entire planet i i don't you know i don't i didn't think of it that way while i was reading it but that's perfect um <laughs> um so yeah uh to me reading the entire series and unlike everybody loves large chess i did finish your entire uh stars have eyes series on royal road as well as ursus uh ex machina i'm finished with that now so i'm now eager now i'm one of your fans or e eagerly waiting for the next chapter but um one thing i did notice that it seemed like you have a lot of experience or knowledge of british culture and i was wondering uh where that comes from if you've visited england a lot or if you have a bunch of friends from there um I have not visited England a lot. I've been there 
once as a teenager and we're just hanging along uh, with my parents or to some kind of conference thing. I didn't see anything beyond, you know, a basic tour of London and also looking at the inside of a hotel room for most of the time. Um, however, uh, I'm very fond of uh, British comedy shows, uh, mm. even those that aren't you know, comedy per se. You know, you're, uh, I'm talking about uh, your top, your top gears, uh, your Mr. Beans, um, Black Adder's fantastic uh, series. Uh, also, you know, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, uh, or just you know anything by God. What even? Oh God, a massive, massive uh, brain blank. What was those? What were those guys called with the uh, with the with with the? Well, it's Monty Python's Flying Circus, right? Yeah. Yeah, th- yeah, those guys. Sorry. Right. So I had all of that. I had Harry Potter. I had the Hitchhiker's Guide. So a lot of influence. Most of it, is, you know, in the in the comedic comedic area. Right. Right. And I, I just, I, I just love the that kind of, you know, just kind of dry and, and snappy sense of humor that is, sh- shall we say, less crude than than what you you see in in uh, say the states these days usually. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, more witty for sure. And also, and also, I played TF2 on a mostly British and Irish server for about three years with voice chat. So right, so you you picked up a lot of their colloquialisms and stuff that way, yeah. like you know, they're more modern ones. Um, yeah. So, uh, did you find it more difficult writing a sociopathic story or a genuinely heartfelt romance? Um, they were both fairly challenging, but for different reasons. With with Boxy. It's just an alien mindset that I have to work myself into. But once I have a grasp on it, as you said, everything feels like it's it's in character. It's logical for the box, and that's because I, you know, I, I tried really hard to get into the mindset of this box. Like, what does he care about? What does he what does he not care about? How would he re- react into any given situation? You know, uh, that sort of thing. So, and it was very challenging for me to get a handle on that, while also getting a handle on, on all the other characters in the same way, because that's a lot of people in my head, right? Right. To juggle at once, it can be tricky. Um, I also struggled with the story itself. Like, where do I go from here? Or I know where I want to go, but how do I get there? Right? Because um, a lot of it, there was very little planning that went into it, and I just kind of rolled with the punches. And uh, as we, it, it was the same way with Stars of Eyes, but with the Stars of Eyes, the problem was more of a balancing act because on one hand you have this like ultimate being and on the other hand you have this total moron and schmuck right and how do you write them so that a it's a believable relationship and b that maggie doesn't like completely dominate the show right 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 because it's a it's a very weird kind of narrative balance thing that you know I'm I'm pretending to be a real offer now, so I have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, how long did it take you to write "The Stars Have Eyes," and is it finished for good? Uh, yes, it is finished. Uh, I've decided to, uh, like I said, it was never intended to go on very long. So, um, and one of the issues with the sort of you know slice of lifey thing is they very quickly run out of steam and then they introduce some some idiotic uh conflict just to kind of keep things rolling right uh looking at uh at manga series uh in particular because they 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 do the whole uh my girlfriend is an ex thing a whole a whole bunch right and it always goes very weird and and it kind of loses the tone right Uh, but um Time-wise, I think it's about six months uh, to make the whole thing, which at, I think it's 37 chapters, works out to about chapter a week. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's, I don't know, I, I'm trying to remember, I mean, you know, each chapter is a bit different lengthwise, but it seems like, you know, around 5,000 words a piece. So, um I don't know. Do you think maybe you got 200,000 words there? Uh, I mean, I could look up some stats real quick. Um, 
so stats on Royal Road, it claims uh, they have a weird system where they count pages, right? right? So it's 585 pages, which is 275 words, 160,000 ish, 160,000. So a good, a good thick novel worth of material there. A good thick novel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what is it like uh, being finished? writing even everybody loves large chests um while you're still only done with half of it on kindle and audible honestly it's a it's a little bit disheartening because going back you know uh going over it you know fixing up some issues editing all that stuff it feels like the creative equivalent equivalent of arranging bricks mm. it's it's very dull it's it's pretty soul crushing, and honestly, it's I kind of have to force myself to do that at times, right? Which I do not, I do not like. And you don't want to to not like your own work, you know? Right. So it's yeah. I I don't have, and when I when I stop and, and think about all of the bricks that remain to be put into place, because we're we're only like not even halfway through, mm -hmm. like maybe a third through or something. Oh, I mean, for the, I, I'm like for me and for the fans, this is great news, <laughs> you know. But but as, as you say, it's a lot of work for you. So um, I I also feel for you. But on the another upside, fans have told me several fans have told me that where we're at right now is when it really starts to get good. Um, and so I'm I mean, to me, it seems like you know having done as much as you had in the series up to that point, you'd really gotten your, you know, you'd really sharpened your writing chops and it shows in the plot and in the way things turn out. You know, you would think that, like you said before, a series like this, you would be running out of ideas or getting sloppy with it, but it seems only to be tightening and getting more interesting and more intricate. Um, it's, it, is is the is the knot about as tied as it's going to get at this point, or are we uh, are we going to like um, are we going to get even more chaos coming up? I mean, there's only so much escalation you can you can put in before it, it gets absolutely ridiculous. Uh, exhibit A, Dragon Ball Z, right. Right, we're not reaching those levels yet. Right? We're not okay. reaching those levels at all. At all. Right? I, I always found it extremely stupid that, you know, I can destroy the planet with a finger. Also, I die if I get shot once. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a very strange thing. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I like the... Uh, but yeah, I like the... Uh, I, I like the idea that there's an in-universe cap on, on, you know, on how powerful an individual can become. And even then... No individual, you know, no matter how strong, is an island unto themselves. Like right? if they're like, I'm going to rule the world by myself, it's not going to happen. Right. Eventually, he's going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as for where to go from here, plot wise, I mean, of course, there's chaos. I, 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 I you know, in from here on, after this point, I try to aim for a different variety of chaos rather than just more of it. Because at some point, as I said, it just becomes nonsensical. Right. Um, for, I, for example, I think the chaos kind of peaks. Uh, actually, no, that's spoiler territory. Let's not go there. <laughs> but yeah, there is a point where the chaos absolutely peaks, and after that, it becomes more introspective, I guess. A little bit more, more on the per personal stakes, not so much, you know, haha, -ha, uh, giant war things, massive demons, right. big monsters. Gotcha. So, um, uh, do you find yourself wanting to uh, find an excuse to return to Boxy's universe, or just Boxy as a character? After, I mean, the whole thing's done on Royal Road. Uh, you're still putting together Audible and Kindle, but once all that's over, I honestly, I, I, I'm pretty happy with uh, with Boxy's story as is. Um. I've I've been kind of toying around with writing short sort or short stories in the sec in the setting of you know of uh, side characters or 
completely unrelated characters, you know, uh, also original characters. You know, I, um, I have a Patreon thing whereby, you know, at the top tier, um, you know, you, you you give me some guidelines and I'll, I'll try and you know come up with a with a with a short story that you know you would like to read that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's all. But to to make a long story short, I I I, bet, I sometimes think about it, but I know I'm probably not never going to return to it. Let's yeah. let's let's leave it as it is. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, you know, all, all the best stories have have decided endings, right? And in, in my opinion, like when and I like that you uh, that you don't that you don't want to run it into the ground. You know, just come just have excuses to keep running it because that's to me when when series get stale and boring when they're just trying really hard to to squeeze more juice out of the stone more water more water out of the stone blood juice just call it juice Juice. we'll call it juice from the stone we'll roll with juice okay so two two more questions what is ursus ex machina all right um Versus X Machina is again a completely different story from a, well from anything else I tried to, to write. It's more, um, it's more of a, my attempts to kind of go back to my roots, which is to say a, a more of a, a more traditional uh, adventure story. I mean, traditional as in the whole framing, as in you know, you have a bunch of people on on some kind of quest, and you know they have to overcome these things. Now, uh, for people not familiar with it, as a basic overview, uh, it starts with a four-person uh, group of adventurers, which is basically sort of your mid to high level D and D party, effectively, and they're fighting against the lich, and things go wrong, and they get catapulted into a completely different world where magic barely exists, uh, and it's all you know. It, it goes from they go from a fantasy to a steampunk thing. You know, translocated, and the story follows uh, uh, our main man Ozzy, who is a big burly druid man, uh, who has to you know m- adapt to civilization overrunning nature slowly. And yeah, and he's the actual bear in the machine. Yes, that's okay. yes. I mean, the people are are, are kind of uh, joking at me that I don't understand latin and that the the title makes no sense i'll tell you what i don't understand latin you're right you know you know who also doesn't understand latin everyone else yeah well um i i i went to a latin grammar school when i was uh for kindergarten through second grade and ursa is is one of the one one of the words i do remember from those lessons even though i barely paid attention but uh um yeah this story makes me want to try and wrestle a bear though um see what it'd be like uh, but uh yeah i i'm i'm having a lot of fun with it um and again like you said it's a, to me a complete departure from both everybody loves large ch- chess and stars have eyes i mean aside from the writing style and, and the style of humor there's really not much they have in common yeah see that, that's the thing right because I'm I'm a person that's very easily influenced by uh, other stories, right? Mm-hmm. It's also part of the reason why I don't read because if I read something that I really like, it's going to start bleeding to my writing, right? And and there's elements of it here and there, like where I I I know I had certain let's say phases, right? Sometimes it's very noticeable. Uh, for example, there's a light novel. Um, it has one of those weird little Japanese names. It's a, a whole sentence, but it's the uh, the one that's that's like. So what if I'm a spider? It recently got an anime adaptation, and the start of Large Chest is actually inspired by how that one started. Is as in, it's just a monster in a dungeon, and that dungeon is their whole world until they eventually break out of it. Right, mm-hmm. and that's kind of where. You know that that sort of influence is 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 very conscious, but sometimes things just bleeds in, and so I try to keep my series different. Otherwise, I'm going to start kind of meshing them together in some kind of unholy abomination. Right. Yeah. 
Well, that's 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 a that's a good policy to hold. So how how long do you pers- uh, do you foresee Ursus ex, ex Machina uh, going on? Do you have a plan? Uh, do you have a planned end, or is this something that you're that you're still uh, winging at the moment? Well, uh, first of all, let me say I'm flattered that you think I ha- I, I have things planned out. <laughs> um, I mean, I I have a rough idea of where it's going, right? It, it's because as with the other things, I I decide on where I want to go a little bit ahead of time, and then I kind of work my way there, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I want to hit, you know, certain, like, uh, like in my in my brain, I know, okay, so after he does this, he has to start working towards that, and after that's resolved, then this other thing is going to kind of take precedence, and then we'll go back to the other thing. So I have a, I have a roadmap without roads, right? Essentially. Gotcha. Yeah. So we we know we know where. Um, we know where, uh, Joan Jones landed, but just right. barely, we've only got a little, a little taste of her story at the moment. We know where, um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting the, the main character's name. Um, Ozzy, uh, Ozzy. Yeah. We know where, where Ozzy landed and we've been with him for the vast majority of the, of the story. Do you already know where the other two have landed? Yep. Okay. Uh, I know full well. Uh, and you know, it's not really going to be a spoiler because I do intend to write these kind of side stories to just keep, give a glimpse of how everyone else is doing, right? So, uh, yes, very minor spoiler warning for a, for a few minutes if anyone cares. Um, so, uh, Lady Cassandra, the uh, the sorceress of the group, uh, would have actually uh, wound up in Angela's homeland, which is a. Uh, mm-hmm. A vaguely Italian Mediterranean archipelago sort of thing, and there she's like leveraging her skills in research and investigation uh, to be a freelance reporter for a, for a new site. And through that, she's also you know keeping an eye out because because she, she knows her teammates are gonna make a lot of noise wherever they, they end up. So eventually, it's gonna reach her. Uh, yeah, she and as for uh, as for. Uh, Happy? happy, the happy, the uh, the blue skinned devil man. Uh, he's actually going to end up um, in uh, dwarven lands, which, uh, as uh, briefly touched upon, are extremely uh, xenophobic. Like they hate all outsiders, and him being as outsidery as outsiders can get, you know, you you'd think he'd be in uh, in kind of a rough spot. But you you, you know that joke of when uh, you say someone you know. Uh, I'll see you in hell, and then the, the guy says, yeah, "Jokes on you! I'll be running the place in a week." Mm. Kind of, it's kind of happy situation. I let, let, let's let's just say he found the hell to run. Oh man. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited for those. Uh, I'm really excited to to see more of this story. Uh, I will be following your notifications on Discord uh, for that. But for everyone else who maybe hasn't. Um, hasn't discovered you yet, or uh, would like to follow you cl- more closely. Where where would you like them to find you? I'm. I mean, honestly, I don't. I have a very minimal social media presence, just because that's you know it's not my scene, so to see, mm-hmm. so to say. I mean, I'm I'm on. I guess I'm on Facebook, but I rarely use it outside of you know occasionally popping in to see see things and maybe do some little bit of promotion here and there um but i'm always on discord so whoever wants to 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 mess with that can you know can just hop over there you know i i have like different channels for all the stories of which i'm probably just gonna archive at some point but anyway yeah so, so your Discord, your Discord server. Discord is prim- is basically the only place where anyone can find me. Okay, uh, so we'll put a link to that in the description of this video. And what about your Patreon? Oh yeah, I have that as well. Uh, the Patreon, uh, honestly, the Patreon, it's there. I don't interact very much uh, with people on there, which I really should be doing. It makes me feel guilty. But honestly, the whole Patreon thing exists so I can keep throwing money at my artist. 
mm-hmm. without feeling guilty about myself because I'm a very um, I have a very pe- penny pinchy personality. Hmm. Gotcha. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks again, Naven, for uh, coming in and talking to, to me. And uh, I, I think people are going to enjoy this interview. Um, for all of you that got pranked, um, ha ha. Uh, that was really fun. And I, I, I hope you're a little bit pissed about it, but not too pissed. Uh, uh, joke, we joke, are jokes on you. I, I laughed at 20 minutes straight of that. <laughs> it was not a prank. It was a treat. And don't, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, well, thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. It was, uh, it was a pleasure to do it as well. Um, so any of you who are seething and still would like to know when Everybody Loves Large Chess 6 is coming out, um, today uh, we are recording the last of the voices which will be will watt playing zilla and um yeah another month month and a half of production after that and it should be pretty damn close to getting out the door so um that's that's it for the interview thanks again to ven um and yeah on to the next segment of sbtl